Hello creatives, welcome back to my channel. For all of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Angela, I'm a graphic designer and an illustrator, and today we're gonna be diving into Photoshop to see what's new and what you still can't do. We're gonna dive in in just a moment. For all of you who have subscribed to me, I know I have a, quite a few new subscribers. Thank you very much. We have reached 900 so far, so thank you all so much. I'm really grateful that all of you really enjoy my videos and my teaching style. Let's dive in to Photoshop on the iPad. I know I haven't been on Photoshop on the iPad in a little bit, but let's get started. So this is going to be a little bit of an overview of what is new. Some of the things aren't exactly new, but they're in a new spot. So let's get into it. All right, so the first one we have here is content aware fill. Finally, okay, finally. There's one of you, it was last year, I think it was last year. There was one of you who wanted to be able to do this on the iPad. You just got an iPad, you were editing wedding photography, really wanted to be able to do this on the iPad and was like, am I not finding it? Like what's going on? And it just didn't exist. It is now here. That is so much needed in Photoshop. So content aware fill is there. If any of you don't know what it does, I will show you in a little bit. For those of you who are new here, I typically like to go through each item that's new and then I show you after what it's all about. Remove background is the next one. This one is pretty new for the iPad. There was a version of this on the mobile app, I believe, when you would bring up a photo. Photoshop Express, I think it's called, on the mobile app. It was really easy just to do that. You can also do this really easily in the Creative Cloud, which is now brought to the iPad, thankfully. I'll showcase that to you guys. And select Subject Portrait. This one isn't exactly new. They just put it in a new spot. This is where you can select your subject, very easily create a clipping mask so that way you can mess around with the subject only and not the background. Then we have sync and rename while editing. That's always handy. Custom and Adobe fonts. Adobe fonts has always been available on the iPad. The only difference is that now you can do custom fonts. And what that means is you can have your own fonts or you can also have variable fonts. And variable fonts are really fun because they allow you to do different techniques and have different like color choices and such like that with them. And then of course there's like 20,000 some odd Adobe fonts that you can choose from, which I have personally been enjoying because I found some new fonts that I'll share with you. You can also import any of your own or any font files that you have previously downloaded from other creators and put them into Photoshop, which is so nice. Always, whenever they create an update and bring out new items and new things for any program for Adobe, they always tell you or at least try to let you know what's coming up next. I'm pretty excited for these. I really want grids and guides to come out, swatches, layer effects would be nice and also liquify. Liquify would also be really handy because there's lots of different effects you can use and lots of different looks you can acquire with liquify that you can't really get with just using what's already there. So let's get into using these. I have a very simple square artboard here of Moon Knight. How many of you have watched it? Don't spoil, please. We don't do spoilers here. I have personally enjoyed it. It is definitely a different type of show. I think it's pretty cool. It definitely opens up a different viewpoint in a different world when it comes to superheroes. Let's get into the new tools and what you can't do. Now we're gonna start with the first one which is content aware fill. For any of you who don't know what content aware fill is, it's basically where you make a selection of something that you don't want in your photographs or in your images. For instance, I don't want Steve's face here for now. I'm gonna make a duplication of this layer right here. You can tap on the layer over here and you can duplicate it by pressing the double pages icon and that duplicates it for you. The layers panel is this first icon up here. You can tap it 
and tap it again to make it appear and disappear. There is a more traditional layers panel, which is the second icon on the right toolbar just below. It gives you the more traditional looking layers panel, but I like the more simplified version of it where it's just like a tiny docket. On the left toolbar, you have your selection tool, which is the first one. You have a transform tool, which is the next one. And then you have your selections. So your selection tools are pretty much either defaulted to the quick selection tool, which is right down here, or the lasso tool, which is the first one. I'm just going to use lasso tool for it now, and then I'll show you the content aware fill. Tap on the tool and then just draw around his face. Once we have our selection live or active, a quick selection menu appears. There is an option for content aware fill. Content aware fill helps to take the surrounding content and fill it in the space that you have selected. So that way, if there's something in an image that you don't want there, you don't have to just erase it and then try to clone stamp around or fill the background and make a big mess. So let's tap on content aware fill. It's going to take it a few moments to figure this out. Yes, so it did do that. It took a selection from the chest area. So this isn't 100% foolproof. You can also find the content aware fill under the properties panel, under quick actions. It's nested under there as well as the other two new new items and actions. They're all under there. I'm not quite sure how it's pulling the selection from down here. Let's see, let's deselect real quick. I'm thinking that it might be pulling just because it's right next to his face. So it's pulling it from here. It doesn't give you the option to make your own selection of information that you wanna pull from over to the area that you want. So this is a little bit tricky. It's not exactly foolproof. Let's try a smaller selection and see what it does. Pretty sure it will work a little bit better with smaller selections. Yep, mm -hmm. okay. So you just gotta take smaller selections with the iPad version. In the full desktop version, you get to choose where you want to pull your content from. It does that for you. Okay, so this one may be just a little bit more tricky. It looks like they're pulling from a similar color scheme, but it's not a similar physical space on the artboard itself. So that makes it a little bit more tricky to get this correct taking it in like little pieces will help you get there, which looks like it's working so far. Small little snippets and just content aware filling. The only way to improve this would be to make it to where you can pull from a selection or from a specific area. That way you have more control over the content that you're pulling from in order to fill it into another space. Other than that, it works pretty well. It definitely filled the space with the content that's surrounding, which is what Content Aware Fill does. And make sure you do it in small piece mealy parts instead of doing a whole big space like you can on the desktop, just in small, small parts. There we go. All right, so that was Content Aware Fill. We just got rid of Steve over here on the left. Take it in little piece mealy sections on the iPad. On the desktop, you can do the whole thing. All right, the next selection that we're going to do is the select subject. Your select subject is nested under the lasso tool under actions, select subject, but you can also find it over here in the right toolbar under the properties panel, select subject. So let's select that and it's going to automatically figure out what your subject is based on the photograph and the imagery. And it pretty much selected the entire subject exactly how I wanted it to. One little exception, right over here where the hood is the lightest. In order to add to that selection, I'm just gonna use my lasso tool because it's just easier on the iPad to use the lasso tool. Select the double dash line pages, which is the second option in the lasso tool selection here. That selection will allow you to add to the selection you already have from the select subject. This is just if it has similar lighting to the background. Sometimes the select subject doesn't catch everything. Refine your selection by doing little selections with the lasso tool. So for all of you who have seen Moon Knight, did you like it? What do you think? Now what we can do with this selection is that we can click on 
mask in the quick selection menu and it masks him out from the background. So if we hide the background image, he stands alone. Don't forget to deselect at the very end. The next thing that we can do, since we have him select subjected out, we can remove the background. So let's turn our layers back on. Let's go down to the original and go into the properties panel. Under quick actions, select remove background. It will remove the background for us. So you can turn the layer mask off and the background will come back. Basically what remove background does is something very similar to select subject, but sometimes select subject would be a better choice, especially if you have more than one subject in a photo and you want to just select the main subject and then remove certain elements instead of removing the entire background. But remove background is if you just want to completely get rid of the background. So you have separate elements here. We have this one where Steve is removed. We have him stand alone as a subject. Just turn on this top layer and then let's, let's mess with this a little bit. Let's go into our properties panel, add a clipped adjustment exposure. Mess with the gamma, make him lighter, make him darker. Ooh, darker looks cool. It makes it look a lot cooler. So before, after, very cool. I just like to do that with photographs. We have remove background here. We have our select subject here as well. And we also have the content aware fill where we removed the character in the background. We can remove the other one, but I kind of like the other one. The, the next one is fonts. Now fonts are always going to be something that gets updated all the time. Let's choose our type tool over here. Tap on the screen, more Mipsum pops up, of course. Moon Knight, all in capital letters. So this little crosshairs selection pops up. The layer properties under the text pops up automatically for us, which is great. And then we have a whole bunch of new selections in here. Our baseline shift, our vertical and horizontal scale. We also have all these different types of selections for the type itself, like we have in InDesign. If you guys haven't seen my new InDesign series, the link will be either in the description or somewhere on the screen for you all. They also have blending options in here. Ooh, that's cool. You can change your font size. Let's make this a lot bigger. Let's move this over so you all can see it's better. I do wanna increase the tracking quite a bit. I don't want Galgi as my font. Let's choose a different font. There are, ooh, Academy Engraved. That kind of looks cool, especially if we made the color a gray instead. That would look pretty cool, but let's choose something else. Da, 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 da. There we go. I would love to do one of these new ones that I found. Ooh, I really like the look of Angie Sands, but I'm wondering if Allegria would be better. Is Allegria too much? Angie Sands looks like it's much more in tune with Moon Knight. Yes, all right, so that looks a lot better. Something cool that we can do. There are variable fonts in here as well that you can select from. You can always just Google variable fonts or look on Adobe Fonts for variable fonts. But there's so much more control over the font here. Tracking is the spacing in between letters. Letting is the spacing in between lines of text. I'm going to keep that as auto. I'm going to keep tracking at 65 and my font size is at 88. Tap done. Next, let's duplicate this text layer by tapping on the little docket layer here and pressing the double pages. Move it down slightly. In the properties panel, instead of it being gray, we're going to make it white. Very appropriate. All right, so that's looking really nice. There is some things that you still can't do in Photoshop on the iPad. One of the things you cannot do is have swatches. You have a color palette over here on the left toolbar for fill and for stroke, and you can swap them by tapping and dragging them and swapping them around. You also have your sliders here for HSB, CMYK, RGB, and you can tap in and enter, they're not sliders, but you can tap in and enter your amounts, but you don't have saved color swatches in here. I really want saved color swatches in Photoshop. They said that they're coming. They've been saying it since last year. I really, really would like them to have it finally. The other thing that is missing, unfortunately, is there are no effects in here, which they did mention is something that is going to be coming. 
drop shadow, any other kind of effect where you want to do any kind of blending or blurring, you have a selection over here on the left toolbar under adjustment tools you can smudge but you don't have much else really all you have is smudge so having effects like drop shadow and blur and gaussian blur and stuff like that would be really really helpful in this program which is pretty necessary in my opinion especially if you need to have like a focal point of like a subject for instance moon knight and you want everything else blurred out in the background, you have to go in and manually do it with the smudge tool. And that just takes forever, rather than just being able to do a blur. Blurs would be great. Other effects, like for instance, like I mentioned before, liquify that they want to bring out, it would be nice to have, however, blurs, as well as like drop shadows. Those I think would be a lot more substantial. There is still a lot that you can do here with the clipped adjustments options, but it's just the rest of those, like we just need effects. We need effects, we need swatches. There are grids and guides that they want to bring out, which would be super helpful, especially when you're trying to line things up. It would be nice to be able to have them. These two fonts here. These two fonts, I do want to select both of them, convert them to smart objects. Take my selection tool and then just select out and erase what doesn't need to be there. So we can have a look like this, or where you can mask this, add a clipped adjustment to it change the exposure level, change the blend mode, take down the opacity, and then you have it to where it looks like kind of like a phase of the moon. So we have something that also looks like this. There are quite a few things that you can do here. You can also share for commenting where you can go into the name of your file and then you can change the name and rename it live and then it updates it for you. That's always nice. So having these new selections here, the select subject, the remove background, and also having the content aware fill, all very handy. They're nested here in, under the lasso tool and under the selections tool in the left toolbar under actions. They're also over here on the properties panel under quick actions. If you just come down, their content aware fills under there as well. So you have all those options now available to you. There's so many things that you can do with these new selections and quick actions with the select subject, the content aware fill, the remove background, not to mention the numerous amount and style of fonts that you can now choose. Really just want them to bring out swatches and effects <laughs> that would just complete the entire program for me on the iPad so if there's anything that you want Adobe to come out with for Photoshop on the iPad leave them in the comments down below I'm curious to know what you all would like to have as well if you all just work in Photoshop alone do you agree with me do you disagree with me I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it useful give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you all in my next video. See you soon, creatives.